Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing well today. What a day of news it has been. Unbelievable scenes, especially the story that we're going to kick off with today. Because no one saw this coming. No one saw this coming. I'm going to show you something that is going to be very, very interesting. And I hope all of you are ready for it. It's unreal. If you somehow haven't heard of this, um, I'll be surprised. It's, this has rocked the Chelsea world today. Because it was very unexpected. No one heard any rumour about this. And we're going to get into the detail. But firstly, let's check out what had actually gone down. It's involving Mark Gurhey, centre-back. Academy product. Where is he off to? He's not staying at Chelsea. This is what's happening. Exclusive. Crystal Palace. Close to completing permanent signing of Chelsea defender Mark Gurhey. 21-year-old having medical today ahead of penning five-year deal. CFC have a sell-on clause plus matching rights on the future move. That was revealed by David Ornstein who had written with um, Stu James 75 for The Athletic. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is shocking why? Because... Mark Gurhey was seen as, I'd say, alongside Conor Gallagher as the next two. We've had, you know, Hudson Odoi, Loftus Cheek. You know, they came through. Then we had Mason Mount, Rhys James, Tammy Abraham, um, Tamori. Then afterwards, Billy Gilmore. We've had, we've had these academy players come into the first team. The ones that every single Chelsea fan has had their eye on as the next bunch is Mark Gurhey, Conor Gallagher. And you could see that they were so close. They are so close now. And just as of yesterday, Mark Gurhey and Conor Gallagher are both at pre-season training at Cobham for Chelsea. Now we're getting this news. Mark Gurhey is going to Crystal Palace on a permanent deal. A five-year deal. And I can hear already a load of you are angry, upset. Don't understand. You're thinking, "Wow, well, my God. First we let go of Tomori. Now we let go of Gurhi. They're both centre-back. So what are we going to do? Does that mean we're going to go and buy a centre-back? There's, there's panic amongst a few of you. And a few of you seem to be saying, at least on social media, and I've seen it from some of the other guys, oh, this is a shocking decision from Chelsea. This is a shocking decision from the club. How can they let go of such a talent? Oh, uh, just, just for a bit of money. Oh, ridiculous. What I am going to say, I'm going to be brutally honest here. When you get a fee, which is what's being reported, of £20 million, £20 million for a player that hasn't even made a senior appearance for the club yet, you're not going to say no. I don't care who you are. I don't care. It, it's easy from the outside to say, oh, shocking decision. No, we should, have, we should have turned it down. But if you were in Roman or Marina Granovskaya's shoes or Bruce Buck or whoever's at the club and you receive an offer on the fly from Crystal Palace of £20 million, which for them is probably their entire budget, <laughs> or at least half of their budget, £20 million on the table for Mark Gurhey, a player that you don't even use, and you're trying to chase Erling Haaland for €175 million Euros, or £150 million, pounds, you're going to say yes. You will say yes. I saw that and thought, Margurhi, I can't believe it. Like, surely he's next in line. What are we doing letting go of him? I was of that. And then a few minutes later, the details started seeping through. And I was on a live stream with Matisse and, and Miz, the All You Can Eat Chelsea, over on Matisse's channel. And we had Adam Newson, correspondent for Football London, on as our special guest. And the news came in as we were live. And I saw it and thought, this is unbelievable. Why, why have we let go of him? And why? where did this offer come from? All of a sudden... £20 million. Pounds. I hear that and I think, wow, unbelievable. £20 million like that for a player that hasn't even made a senior appearance for Chelsea. Yes, please, I will accept that deal. And anyone that says no, with all due respect, you either don't understand business or for you, you see £20 million as nothing, whereas for the club and a player that hasn't even made a senior appearance, it's a very big deal. It's a very big deal and it's something you can't say no to. You just can't. Because there's always the risk that he would be brought into the first team and not succeed, maybe. Maybe he would, but maybe he won't. You know, maybe he won't have the impact that many people feel like he would. Who knows? You never know. But you get 20 million, you're taking it. You're taking it. So with all due respect, what I am going to say is good luck to Mark Gurhey. 
There is a buyback on it from Chelsea. So that's a good thing. Chelsea haven't just let him go on the fly. Uh, you know, we have put in a clause in the contract and apparently we will match any offer that comes in for him in the future. As well as um, a sell-on clause as well and, and possible uh, financial implications coming in if another club tries to buy him in the future, which benefits Chelsea. So I'm cool with that. What it does tell me is a few things here. What we've learned from this is um, I think Rudiger Christensen will be signing new contracts. Because I think at the end of the day, Chelsea wouldn't be willing to let a talent like this go if centre-backs were leaving the club. I, I don't think Chelsea... I think Chelsea know exactly what's going on. So there's that. Secondly, you can't say no to 20 million. I think we've learned that. And thirdly, this has proven to all of you and to me, Chelsea like to do things quietly. No one, no journalist, nobody knew of this deal. Not even Fabrizio Romano. No one knew that Mark Gurhi was going off to Crystal Palace. Until today, this morning, when it was official and David Ornstein revealed in an exclusive that a medical is being done today. That means the deal's done. Everything's done. No one heard a thing. So what I want to tell you guys in relation to Erling Haaland now, who we're going to move on to, because we've heard an update in relation to Haaland today, is Chelsea like to do things quietly. And trust me, if they don't want you to hear about something, you won't hear about it. That's how Chelsea operate. Now, with this Haaland deal, Borussia Dortmund are on the other side. And they've been talking quite publicly. They're happy for news to come out. They're happy for details to come out. They're happy to have a little blabber to the press and to the media and to let everyone know of what's going on. That's not how Chelsea operate. But with Dortmund, we can't shut them up. We can't silence them. That's their prerogative and that's their decision. If they're going to talk and release little details and allow little leaks to come through, yes, that's going to be about us. But it's not coming from Chelsea. It's coming from Dortmund's side. So just remember, Chelsea like to do things quietly and if you don't and if, if they don't want us to know we won't know as proven today Mark Gurhi's off to Crystal Palace uh for five years in a 20 million pound deal unbelievable good luck to Mark Gurhi let's get into the latest on Erling Haaland because Sky Germany's let us know of a little development let's check this out Borussia Dortmund have rejected Chelsea's proposed offer for Erling Haaland which included a part exchange involving Tammy Abraham or Callum Hudson-Odoi heading the other way as part of a deal. What I do want to clarify here, because this came out and all of a sudden there was a flipping storm on social media. Oh, Dortmund have rejected the first bid. Dortmund have said no to the first bid. This was not a bid. This was not a bid. <laughs> Let's put it right. This was not an official bid. This was a proposed offer, not an actual offer. There's a difference. Let me clarify what the difference is. A proposed offer means there have been informal discussions between the two parties and it's been mentioned. Chelsea have gone, would you be interested in a part exchange deal? And you can get Tammy or Callum. And Dortmund have gone, no. And there we are. Chelsea haven't actually submitted a bid. It needs to be official for it to be a bid. There's been no official bids. There's been no bids. There have been discussions. But it's nice to know now that Chelsea are talking with Dortmund. That now we are trying to test the waters out. Chelsea are trying to see how far we can push Dortmund. You know, how close can we get them to our evaluation of it, not of theirs. How, you know, they're working things now. And it's nice to see this news of a rejection is a good thing. I'm looking at it as a good thing. Because there is no way Dortmund were going to accept that. If you're Dortmund, you're not going to accept a part exchange for a player and a little bit of cash for your best player in Erling Haaland. You're going to say no. Chelsea know that a no was coming. In informal discussions, they have to say. That's how business works. You start off low and you work your way up and try and get the best deal possible. And Dortmund, on the other hand, are going to try and, you know, start high and then possibly let a little go, but try and get as much from the deal as possible until both uh, parties come to a compromise. Obviously, what this is going to take is a massive deal of £150 million. That is without saying. But let's see what Chelsea can do and let's see what Marina can pull in terms of pulling the strings and hopefully bringing that evaluation a little bit down. Now, let's get to Fabrizio Romano, who's given us a little clarification on the back of Sky Germany's news. Here it is. Borussia Dortmund have not received any official bid yet for Haaland. Borussia Dortmund know about Chelsea's interest. Their position is clear. If a crazy bid won't arrive, he'll stay. If Haaland stays, the race will be open to many clubs next summer. 75 million euro release clause. And he said it. No official bid. There have been no official bid. But as he has mentioned, if a crazy bid comes in, Dortmund will be forced to look at that and go, OK, we might have to accept. 
There's just no two ways about it. And this is why I clarified in yesterday's video, the ball is in our court. It's in Roman's court. It's in Chelsea's court. Put the money on the table and let's get this, to, let's get this going. Now, as I've already mentioned, it's nice to know that we are already beginning discussions and we're, begin, we're beginning negotiations and we're starting to test the waters to see what Dortmund are all about and what they'd accept and what they won't accept. They've not accepted in any way whatsoever a part exchange with a little bit of cash. It's a nice way to try. You've got to try to get an answer. That's the way life works. Now it's about trying to up it a little bit and see what they'll accept. And we'll see how far we can go. This might take a few weeks, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, I've got a feeling that Dortmund might just say, look, we want 150 million. That's it. Take it or leave it. They might do that. They might do that. We'll see. But Chelsea are starting to do business. Chelsea are starting to talk and are starting to move their way around, which is exactly what we've all been waiting for. It's happening, people. It's happening. So we'll wait and see what other developments come out. But it's a good sign to see this news today. Now, I do want to say very briefly, Christian Fork has put something very interesting. Check this out. So he's put uh, running 175 million euros and he's tagged Erling Haaland, Borussia Dortmund and Chelsea. And he shows a clip of Erling Haaland today at training for Borussia Dortmund uh, much like a spy cam if you will you know there's Erling Haaland in pre-season training with Borussia Dortmund let me just say the last time that he tried this the last time that Christian Fork done something like this was this the Havertz cam and there we are when he was at Bayer Leverkusen days before a bid was accepted by uh, by Leverkusen from Chelsea for Haaland's signature. And uh, now he's doing it for Erling Haaland. I'm just saying. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Now, to wrap up this video, I've got one little last piece of news, and it's about Tammy Abraham. Obviously, Olivier Giroud is in Milan now. We're waiting for that medical to go through. So when it's official, which I'm guessing will be tomorrow... Um, we'll get confirmation that Giroud has joined AC Milan. And I'll do a video on him because he deserves it. Um, but let's talk about Tammy. This is the latest from Matt Law. Big news. Check this out. Tammy Abraham attracting interest from Arsenal as Chelsea look to offload striker. This is a big, big money move for Chelsea Football Club. Let's have it right because £40 million is what Chelsea want for him. I'm not threatened. I don't know about you. If Tammy went to Arsenal, which I think for him would be fitting because he's an Arsenal fan. And I don't know if many of you know that, but when he was growing up, he grew up supporting Arsenal. I don't know why, um, <laughs> but it is what it is. He's an Arsenal fan. He's a gooner. Obviously, he spent most of his life uh, on, at Chelsea and growing at Chelsea and playing for Chelsea. And now he's here in the first team. But I'm not threatened. If we sold Tammy Abraham to Arsenal for 40 million, right? I'd be cool with it. I don't know about you guys. Let me know in the comments. I would want to hear that. But I'd be happy with that. And this is legit. Arsenal are interested in Tammy Abraham. This has come from Matt Law. This is, this is proper. Chelsea's objective is to try and raise as much money as possible. Let's have it right. So far, we've already raised. So, 30 million from Tomori. 20 million from Mark Gurhi. That's already gone through. Uh, a few million from, what, Victor Moses. Um, <laughs> have we let anyone else go? I feel like we're letting other players go and I've forgotten already. But we've already raised in the in the region of about 50, 60 million pounds. Right? Olivier Giroud's on his way out. That's a couple of million there. Tammy Abraham goes for 40 million. Boom. We've hit 100. I mean, you can see where this is going. We are offloading players and we're raising funds. And we're raising good funds. If Tammy were to go, we've got 100 million ready. Just from three or four players leaving the club. That's quite unbelievable. And to think that we can just add on a little bit more and boom, we've got Erling Haaland. That's a bit crazy. That's, that's, that's net spend. That is proper net spend. And that's how Chelsea do fantastic business. But Tammy Abraham going off to Arsenal, if this were to happen, I think Tammy would accept it. It's a big club. Fair enough. Not as big as Chelsea, but it's a big club. It's in London. It's a team that he supported when he was young. So I'm sure he'd want to explore that option. Um, he wouldn't have to change location in terms of where he lives and all that because it's London. Um, Premier League. He'd be starting every game, unlike Chelsea. Perfect. But I wouldn't be threatened. Because um, with Tammy Abraham, there's a question in terms of his development and how far he can actually go. But I'm not necessarily uh, concerned about Tammy. I'm more concerned of Arsenal. Or, as should I say, less concerned with Arsenal. 
I just don't think they have the fabric, the structure or the manager to get the best out of the players that they have. And I think they're going to continue to struggle. And I think we're going to get it documented from Amazon Prime on All or Nothing. And it's going to be absolutely fantastic. And it's going to be a laugh for all of us. I just don't see Arsenal succeed in this season, even without European football. So personally, if they want Tammy and they pay 40 million... Thank you very much. I'll take the 40 million. Not a problem. Not a problem. I'm happy for Tammy to stay. Don't get it twisted. But I don't think he'll play as much. That's one. Um, I don't think he'll make a huge difference in terms of convincing Thomas Tuchel this season at least. We're getting Erling Haaland so his chances are even slimmer. We might as well take 40 million while we can. It's as simple as that. That's where I'm standing on this now. And if Arsenal were to take him, cool. Good luck. Simple as that. I'm cool with Arsenal having him. That doesn't worry me one bit. But I want to let uh, you guys know. Let me know your comments. Let me know in the comment section. What do you think in relation to Mark Gurhey going off to Crystal Palace on a five-year deal? £20 million. Let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think about Haaland and the rejected proposed offer from Chelsea in the region of a, uh, a part exchange bid with Tammy or hudson Odoi involved. That's obviously been turned down in informal discussions. Let me know what you think about that. Let me think uh, what you know about Christian Falk's uh, spy cam. That's very good. And uh, Tammy Abraham to Arsenal. Would you be cool with it? Would you not? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Thank you all so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you are new. Hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash like button if you've enjoyed this and i will see all of you very very soon you'll be getting more content in relation to football in general i'll be doing some double upload days in the next few days so make sure you keep your eyes peeled i'll try and do some twitch streams as well on the fly no watch longs just random twitch streams so make sure you follow me on twitch and i'll see you there have a good one look after yourself see you tomorrow take care and peace